And the award for anime's biggest scumbag goes to... These guys. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 most hated anime characters. For this list, we'll be looking at the anime characters who inspire nothing but animosity among fans. Some are detestable, some just rub people the wrong way, yet they're all universally despised. You used your visual prowess too much. Help me, Sasuke! As always, you can catch me on Twitter at AshJBo, so head over there, give me a follow, and let me know which anime list you want to see next. Are you ready to start collecting and battling your way to the top? Look no further than Raid Shadow Legends. Jump into the realm of Teleria, where the forces of good and evil are in an endless struggle. Customize hundreds of champions across races and factions to create your ultimate team. Raid is free to play on mobile and PC. I love how much variety there is in Raid. Here are some of the many champions you can choose from. Check out those details on those models, they're stunning. And now Raid has Tag Team Arena for PvP fanatics. Take your four champions into a three round battle. The first team to win two rounds is the victor. And as a celebration, Raid is offering great rewards to those who finish high in the ranking. Go to the video description, click on these special links, and if you're a new player, you'll get 50,000 silver, plus 50 gems, plus one energy refill, one clan boss key, five mystery shards, one day XP booster, plus one free champion, Hexweaver. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. Good luck, and I'll see you there. Number 20, Kirino Oremo. Aggressive and unlikable despite harboring a secret that makes her a hypocrite, steals the idiot love interest away from the actual best girl of the series, and ends up going all the way with her brother. Any of these factors would immediately make a character's popularity plummet, and Kirino accomplished all three. Sure, his brother's an absolute moron for thinking with his junk and going the incest route, but it's Kirino's deplorable attitude and sense of entitlement that garnered most of the backlash. <laughs> Why couldn't we have just focused on Kuroneko? <laughs> Number 19, Chris Thorndike, Sonic X. You know all those creepy folks online that are obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog to uncomfortable levels? Well, they've got nothing on Chris bloody Thorndike. No, please don't run away. Sorry kid, but crickets don't do it for me. At his best, he was about as tolerable as Amy Rose. At his worst, he was a whiny human sidekick who worked himself into every major landmark event of the Blue Blur's canon of work like a cringy self-insert fanfiction character. I wish there was something we could do to help Sonic and the others. This was made all the worse when he risked the chance of Sonic returning to his own world because he couldn't live without his spiky companion. Sonic! Oh. 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 <laughs> Number 18, Sakura. Naruto franchise. Jeez, decades on and the hate train for this ninja is still going strong. Way to go, Sakura. You let everybody down again. What good are you? While we don't consider Sakura the worst thing to stem from Naruto and Boruto's long list of missteps, there's no denying the vitriol that's clung to her character like a stigma ever since she was a naive girl obsessed with Sasuke. Sasuke? I'm so in love with you, I can't even stand it! Maybe it's because many can't see past her days as a useless third wheel, or maybe others found her regression when it came to forgiving the last Uchiha as a stab in the back to what development she had garnered across Shippuden. Either way, dislike for the shinobi is just as rabid as it ever was. From the bottom of my heart, I care about you. Quit it! Just stop, Sakura! Number 17, Yukiteru Amano, Future Diary. You know you've reached the bottom of the barrel when people are more sympathetic towards the crazy, murderous, axe-wielding Yandere than the stale-bred main character. 
Then again, Yuki is hardly innocent in the whole affair. Uh, I completely and totally win at life! Not only was he stupid enough to accept the killing game for the chance to become the god of time, but he tried to use Yuno as a tool to help him win. So, uh, what do you say we grab a bite to eat? Your mom is out tonight, right? And you gotta have something. Because manipulating a killer with a few loose screws and a hardcore crush couldn't possibly backfire, right? You know, don't do this, he's not a threat anymore! Ah! Number 16, Alois Trancy, Black Butler. He's the face of the poorly received sequel series that seemed to contradict the first season and source material. So Alois already had a handicap when he entered the arena of young masters and demon butlers. You have got to be joking! <laughs> the fact he's a spineless, clingy, and oh so arrogant little shit was all his doing though. We're not exactly inclined to feel sympathetic for a character when they spend the first episode gouging out the eye of their maid before acting like a rejected schoolgirl every time they fail to gain the attention of the butler they're boning for. Yes, truly pathetic indeed. <laughs> Number 15, Ishigo, Darling in the Franks. Remember the time that hashtag Bichigo went wild on social media? Well, it wasn't due to fans suddenly deciding the blue-haired mecha pilot needed to be taken down a peg, it was all down to one scene. Just a single scene in which Ishigo destroyed every ounce of likability. <laughs> Despite Hiro clearly wanting to find Zero Two before she's taken away, Ishigo did everything she could to keep him at bay, including forcibly kissing him and confessing her love at the worst possible time. Well, that waifu war ended rather snappily. <laughs> Number 14, Bondrood, Made in Abyss. He only appeared briefly in flashbacks, so how did this armored white whistle's infamy skyrocket overnight? <laughs> That answer lies at the bottom of the abyss, wherein he tricked two orphans to take part in his experiment and sent them both plummeting to the lowest levels, all to observe the effects the curse would have on their bodies, even if it killed them. With Nanachi left as a fluffy ball of regret and Meaty melted into an agonizing blob, we're still hoping Reg shoves his incinerator up Bondrude's tail hole one day. Number 13, Makoto Ito, School Days. Delusional and dim-witted dickhead receives a dozen equally daft damsels into doing the downward dog day in and day out, despite it dooming his dedicated darling to despair. That about sums up as far as Makoto is concerned. Anime's ultimate heartbreaker, who somehow rolls into one sexy scenario after another without a care or even a bloody smile on his face. And yet he's seemingly shocked to his core when he discovers that doing so many women dirty resulted in him getting his comeuppance, or in this instance, several stabs to the gut. <gasps> Number 12, Sugo Nobuyuki, Sword Art Online. Whether he's jacked into Alfheim Online under the guise of the Fairy King Oberon or roaming the outside world as some suit, this guy remains one of the gaming world's biggest scumbags. Thinking himself a god given his higher stats, there's nothing that Oberon won't do in order to get what he wants, including stringing up Asuna and attempting to assault her while making Kirito watch. You bastard! You bastard! Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> Even after getting his ass kicked, he still refused to slither away, attempting to stab Kirito back in the real world, only for him to once again get pathetically owned by a teenager, no less. <gasps> Number 11, Rachel, Tower of God. We knew it was coming. We knew something had to happen. After all, the internet wouldn't be crawling with the hashtag FRachel if Bam's treasured companion didn't pull a shady stunt. <laughs> we just didn't expect her to do that. With the administrator's test coming to a close, a weakened Bam celebrates with his wheeled-bound beloved over how they succeeded and could climb the tower together, at least until she promptly stands up, pushes him out the Shinsu bubble, and sends him plummeting into the depths below. <laughs> All out of a twisted sense of jealousy so she can become a star. Welcome to the shit list, Rachel. Number 10, Shinji Mato, Fate Franchise. Kind of impressive that in a series that features child murderers and narcissistic emperors, Shinji was the one who managed to make fans' blood boil. I think it'd be best for all involved parties if you simply minded your own business. Maybe it's due to how pathetic he is, flaunting his superiority when in truth he's the weakest participant in the Fifth Holy Grail War. The only thing more infuriating than Shinji's ego is his attitude towards women. Come on, Tosaka, grovel for me. If I like what I hear, then I might even let you live. Abusing Sakura, making unwanted advances at Rin, it's no wonder we were happy to see him get his comeuppance on many occasions. It really hurts! Help me! Help me! Number 9, Julieta Juris, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans. Oh boy, she swept in at the last second to steal the glory and as a result catapulted out of our good graces. I have better things to do than babysit! Just where the hell are you, Vidar? Unlike her superiors, Julieta didn't establish herself as a morally grey antagonist fighting for a cause, but just came across as a wishy-washy side chick with a ridiculous amount of plot armor. You're not going anywhere. So, you're still alive, huh? The fact that she was the one who beheaded Mika and Barbatos after they had already died from overexerting themselves was just the bloody cherry on top. Here and now, by the grace of Rustal Elion, commander of the Arian Rod fleet, the demon has finally been slain! We're guessing she was meant to be someone we could mellow towards over time, but in the end, she was simply an annoying, bratty, paper-thin character who never gave us any reason to like her at all. Can you tell I hate her? I have no interest in this operation, but there's something important that I must do. Number 8, Minoru Mineta, My Hero Academia. While some may have warmed up to this great's constant perverted actions and sole goal of becoming a pro hero so he can get lucky with the ladies, there's no denying there's a firm sect out there who think that Mineta is the worst thing to happen to UA High since their security system. Yes, that's amazing! We're safe and we don't have to fight! Uh, yeah, but. I have a real bad feeling about this, Midoriya. He may have proven himself to have the potential to go all the way, but you can bet that he will take whatever deplorable means necessary just so he can get a peek at some skin. Now I know why I have this quirk. It's because walls are meant to be climbed! Peeping through into the girls' changing room, nearly climbing into the girls' hot springs, Mineta's quest to get his purple salad shaken is never ending. But I love him though. That's Jiro's earphone jack! Number 7, Nina Einstein. Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion. 
Before we saw this genius student get intimate with Tablekun, it was pretty clear she had an intense prejudice against the Japanese. And things got a lot worse once she had a mental breakdown. <laughs> Following Princess Euphemia's demise, Nina snapped, deciding that the obvious thing to do to get her revenge on Zero would be to try and blow up the school, as well as help develop weapons of mass destruction that would go on to slaughter many. Yeah, bet Yuffie is real proud of you, Nina. How could this have happened? Number 6, Danzo, Naruto Shippuden. There's no shinobi that doesn't have blood on their hands, but they really can't compare to the deceit employed by this power-hungry geezer. That woman there is no longer the Hokage. I was recently appointed the sixth Hokage. Now hand that letter over to me and I'll answer it. The way he manipulated his fellow ninja so as to secure himself the position of Hokage, the way he collected Sharingan in order to increase his own power, all the bullshit concerning Itachi and the massacre of the Uchiha clan, this warhawk was a criminal mastermind unto himself, whose ambitions had a terrible habit of screwing over our favorite characters. <gasps> Thankfully, it wasn't anything a Chidori couldn't fix. Thanks for taking one for the team, Karin. <laughs> Number 5, Akainu, One Piece. For the sake of justice, no sacrifice is too big. <laughs> That's the creed of this admiral, whose list of accomplishments pretty much epitomized the dark side of the world government. Killing civilians just to snuff out a single criminal? Using propaganda and deception in order to cover up his own horrendous actions? Akainu stands by it all. Kind of scary that a man like that is now running the Navy. Of course, nothing can compare to the time when he murdered Ace right in front of Luffy. That pretty much cemented him as the most hated figure in all four oceans. <laughs> Number 4, Seriu Ubiquitous, Akamega Kill. Speaking of justice obsessed freaks, while she might seem all bubbly on the surface, this high-ranking member of the Jaegers lives to deal out death. <laughs> Viewing all enemies of the Empire as nothing more than villains in dire need of being destroyed, it doesn't take much to flip her kill switch, wherein she goes from sweet to psycho in a heartbeat. <laughs> Her twisted beliefs go so deep that even when she finally met her match, she still believed herself to be doing what's right. Oh, it's just a damn shame she took so many of the Night Raid's best team members with her. Papa, I Number 3. Griffith Berserk no one can deny the White Hawk's charisma, strategy, and drive. He was the perfect foil for the likes of Guts, with noble ideas accompanied with a ruthlessness that almost puts him within reach of his dream. Because of the nature of this task, you are the only person I can trust. You have a choice. This just made his eventual betrayal all the more soul-shattering. Willing to sacrifice his comrades in exchange for divinity, the moment Griffith made his now iconic deal with the devils known as the God Hand, he cemented himself as one of the most hated traitors in the whole medium. Griffith. We won't deny that his descent into villainy was masterful, but damn it if we don't despise him for it. Griffith! Number 2, Sho Tucker, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Nina, 
It may not have swallowed God, committed genocide, or any of the crap that father and his homunculi pulled over the course of the series, but we just can't unsee the horror of the sewing life alchemist revealing a talking chimera with complete jubilation. A chimera made by fusing together his own daughter and her dog. It's a chilling display of inhumanity that continues to haunt the Elric brothers well into their search for the Philosopher's Stone, further illuminating how alchemy can be used for the most insidious means. Oh, how we wish Tucker could have received a few more full metal punches before Scar zapped him. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mine. The Rising of the Shield Hero. It's almost unparalleled how this princess managed to inspire so much pure, unadulterated hatred within such a short amount of time. <laughs> Along with her coward of a father, Mine's plan to discredit and ostracize Naofumi has involved her falsely accusing him of rape interfering with his battle with the spear hero, framing him for his sister's kidnapping, as well as his standard assassination attempts. <laughs> Selfish to the core and with no moral compass to speak of, it took a slave seal and her head under a guillotine for mine to finally humble up. And we couldn't think of a more satisfying way for now Fumi to get revenge. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.